It is believed by many that approximately 445,000 years ago, ancient astronauts from another planet in the cosmos landed on Earth looking for gold. Fourteen tablets of Lord Enki also provide an overview of the emergence of life. It is also mentioned in the tablets of Lord Enki how civilization came into existence on Earth. Chapter 1.1 the first tablet of Lord Enki talks about a terrible atomic war on Earth between the Anunnaki. A deadly radioactive cloud wiped out both gods and humans. Interestingly, this was considered the worst disaster since the Great Flood. Chapter 1.2 In the second chapter, the tablet mentions Anunnaki's home planet, Nibiru. They believed they originated from what our scientists call, primordial soup. They described their planet's thick atmosphere, vegetation, and cycles around the sun, with hot and cold periods. Conflicts arose, leading to the use of atomic bombs that devastated their planet. Eventually, peace was established, and a one-world government was formed. Chapter 1.3 This tablet explains the hierarchy of kingship on Nibiru and mentions the king's marriages, including his union with his brother's daughter. Chapter 1.4 According to the tablet, Anunnaki's home planet faced troubles with its atmosphere. They found a solution by using finely powdered gold in the upper atmosphere for repair. This decision came after a fight among them leading to the killing of a king, similar to the story of Cain and Abel. Chapter 1.5 of the tablet talks about the Anunnaki Council's decision regarding a person who killed the king, who happened to be his distant relative. They decided to make him the new king and didn't give any punishment for his actions. Chapter 1.6 In this tablet, the king attempts to heal the planet's atmosphere by detonating atomic bombs inside volcanoes. Unfortunately, it proves ineffective, and the Anunnaki are not pleased. The next person in line for the throne challenges the king and defeats him in a wrestling match. Fleeing from the Anunnaki, the king escapes to Earth aboard a spacecraft, resembling a story akin to the casting down of Satan. The Second Tablet of Lord Enki Chapter 2.1 This tablet recounts how the defeated king escapes from Nibiru and plans to journey to a snow-covered Earth. He boards a spaceship equipped with atomic bombs, intending to clear a path through the asteroid belt, which had previously blocked the Anunnaki's access to Earth. Chapter 2.2 the tablet describes the arrival of the defeated king on Earth. Chapter 2.3 In this tablet, the defeated king's initial days on Earth are narrated. He discovers breathable air, various fruits, and fish. Moreover, he finds traces of the gold that Nibiru needs to repair its atmosphere. In an attempt to communicate with the new king of Nibiru, he proposes a deal. The Third Tablet of Lord Enki Chapter 3.1 this tablet recounts the defeated king's attempts to regain his status by offering the new king knowledge of the gold on Earth as a bribe. Chapter 3.2 The negotiations come to an end as a team is sent to Earth to assess the presence of a substantial amount of gold. If confirmed, the defeated king will have another chance to win the throne. Chapter 3.3 The Anunnaki travel to Earth, making a brief stop on Mars for water as their spacecraft operates on water. Upon arrival on Earth, they touch down. Chapter 3.4 the tablet describes the first six days of the advanced Anunnaki team on Earth, observing an abundance of food, water, fish, and animals. Chapter 3.5 The Anunnaki team leader declares the seventh day a rest day while processing metals from the waters. The concepts of day, month, and year are named. Chapter 3.6 The tablet narrates the search for gold, which is found but not in significant quantities. The remaining atomic bombs on the defeated king's spacecraft are removed and hidden in a cave to prevent his access. An Anunnaki team member leaves Earth to transport the first basketfuls of gold to Nibiru. The Fourth Tablet of Lord Enki Chapter 4.1 The tablet begins with the arrival of a spaceship carrying the first basket of gold. It was learned that larger gold deposits were underground on Earth. A high-ranking Anunnaki was assigned to oversee Earth operations and arrived on the planet from Nibiru. Chapter 4.2 The Anunnaki visits Earth to inspect the supposed underground gold deposits. A plan is made to decide which of his sons will return to Nibiru and which one will remain in charge of Earth operations, due to their rivalry for the throne. Chapter 4.3 The new king's sons draw lots to determine their roles, and the defeated king asks for a second wrestling match for the throne. The new king wins the match, but the defeated king bites off his penis in a final act of defiance. The defeated king is exiled to Mars, where it was expected he would die. Chapter 4.4 The new king returns to Nibiru and plans the gold harvest on Earth including establishing relay stations on Mars and possibly the Moon. Earth is referred to as Eden. Chapter 4.5 Specific equipment, spaceships, and rockets are built on Nibiru for use on Earth. The Anunnaki faces challenges with Earth's shorter cycles and atmosphere. A group of Anunnaki, including healers, leaves Nibiru for Earth. They first stop on Mars to check on the exiled defeated king and establish a relay station before proceeding to Earth. 
The Fifth Tablet of Lord Enki. Chapter 5.1. Mor and Nunaki arrive on Earth, and the son in charge of gold harvesting meets his sister, a healer. They discuss their family on Nibiru and their desire for their son to come to Earth. The number of Anunnaki on Mars and Earth increases. Chapter 5.2. The tablet mentions the continuing immoral actions of some Anunnaki, including forbidden relationships between siblings. The king's daughter and son have a son together. The king's son in charge of gold mining is cursed by his half-sister after mistreating her. He experiences health problems but finds relief by avoiding her. Chapter 5.3. Rivalries and conflicts arise between the king's two sons, leading to war. The gold is transported to Nibiru to heal the atmosphere. There are now five Anunnaki cities on Earth, and the Ajiji workers start to complain about their workload. Chapter 5.4 The commander of Mars desires to be king and steals the Tablets of Destinies from Eden, leading to his defeat and death. The Anunnaki leaders develop a plan to refine gold on Earth and take only refined gold to Nibiru to accommodate the Ajiji for their rest and return journey. Chapter 5.5 the king's son in charge of mining becomes fascinated with life and animals on Earth. Anunnaki workers rebel in the mines. The king's sons and others devise a plan to return the rebelling Anunnaki to Nibiru and create a primitive worker, the Lulu, to ease their workload. The Sixth Tablet of Lord Enki. Chapter 6.1. The tablet describes the debates and discussions about creating a primitive worker. One of the king's sons believes that the father of all beginning has the power of creation. The other son argues that such beings already exist and should be helpers, not slaves. Despite disagreements, the king decrees the creation of the primitive worker, which some believe involved the creation of mythical creatures. Chapter 6.2 The Anunnaki experiments with DNA, trying to combine their DNA with that of Earth's two-legged creatures, hominoids, to create a viable primitive worker. Many attempts fail, resulting in creatures with deformities. Chapter 6.3 the Anunnaki decides to impregnate one of their females with the combined DNA to create a primitive worker. A child named Adam is born. Seven Anunnaki female healers from Nibiru volunteer to be impregnated and give birth to seven male children. Chapter 6.4 Due to the scarcity of Anunnaki females, the decision is made to create female children and allow them to procreate. The king's son in charge of mining also engages in genetic experiments, leading to more children. Chapter 6.5 Adam and Eve are moved to Eden the main Anunnaki city, along with the other created beings. They are left to roam Eden, but conflicts arise between the Anunnaki leaders about their creations. The Seventh Tablet of Lord Enki Chapter 7.1 Adam and Eve have many children, and the Anunnaki have now been on Earth for three generations. Earth experiences natural upheavals and environmental changes. Chapter 7.2 The Anunnaki consider abandoning the relay station on Mars after 80 shars, equivalent to 288,000 Earth years. Chapter 7.3. A new spaceship port is planned on Earth for direct transport of gold to Nibiru. The king visits Earth to inspect the new spaceport. Chapter 7.4. Conflicts arise again between the king's sons and their offspring. The primitive workers, Adam and Eve's descendants, are brought into the city and given tasks. Chapter 7.5. The king's son who created Adam and Eve continues to experiment, leading to more offspring. He secretly impregnates several young Eves, resulting in births. He presents them as a new, more intelligent generation and passes them off as foundlings. The new generation is given tasks involving agriculture and herding. Once they procreate, the king on Nibiru requests the male earthlings to visit Nibiru. Chapter 8.1 In the eighth tablet of the fourteen, the spacecraft arrives to transport the male earthling back to Nibiru. The king's son sends his other offspring to accompany the male. The king's son deceives the male by telling him not to eat or drink, falsely claiming it's poisonous. They arrive on Nibiru, where the earthling is offered longevity food and elixir. He declines, leading to the king's offense. A tablet from the earthling's father explains his destiny to live and die on Earth. He and one grandson return to Earth. Chapter 8.2 Twin sons Cain and Abel are taught various skills. Discontent arises when Cain's offering is not acknowledged, leading to a fight in which Abel is killed. Chapter 8.4 The aftermath of Abel's murder is discussed, with Cain being exiled. Chapter 8.5 The tablet details teachings to the earthling offspring and their worship of the Anunnaki. The timeline reaches 98 shars, or 352,800 Earth years, since the Anunnaki's arrival. By the 104th shar, or 374,400 years, Earth's kingship lineage continues interbreeding. Chapter 8.6 The tablet narrates the life and death of the first earthling male, referred to as Adam. Born in the 93rd shar, 334,800, 
he dies in the 108th Shar, 388,800, living to be 54,000 Earth years old. Throughout this time, intermarriage occurs between Anunnaki and human Earthlings. The Ninth Tablet. Chapter 9.1, The Anunnaki and Earthlings Intermarry. An issue arises when a king's son wants to marry an Earthling woman. Concerns about preserving the kingship lineage and potential transformation of Nibiru kings into Earthlings emerge. The king decrees that a prince marrying an Earthling forfeits his status and cannot return to Nibiru. The commander of Earth also faces restrictions due to his marriage. Despite objections, a prince marries an Earth woman. Chapter 9.2, Ajiji from Mars attend the wedding and abduct Earthling women for themselves, sparking chaos and undermining the original mission. Chapter 9.3, Earth faces plagues and starvation. Earth commander's disdain for Earthlings deepens. The Earthlings suffer, prompting Nibiru's savants to predict a deluge caused by melting glaciers. Chapter 9.4, Nibiru prepares Mars and Earth for evacuation. The Earth Commander resents the intermingling of Anunnaki and Earthlings, seeing it as a perversion of their mission. The choice to stay on Earth or return to Nibiru is given to the Anunnaki. A calamitous event looms, and each Anunnaki makes a choice. Chapter 9.5, The Anunnaki decide to stay or leave. The Earth Commander plans to annihilate Earthlings, but the Anunnaki pled for their survival, leading to heated confrontations. The approaching calamity and its choices unfold. The Tenth Tablet. Chapter 10.1, the king's son who created earthlings has a dream that prompts him to warn Noah about the impending flood. Noah is instructed to build a sturdy boat to save his family. Chapter 10.2, Noah tricks people into assisting him in building the boat. A navigator arrives with a box of animal DNA. The great flood approaches, caused by Nibiru's proximity to earth. Chapter 10.3, the flood occurs, and Noah's boat settles on a mountain next to Ararat. The Anunnaki return to earth and find devastation. The Earth Commander confronts Noah over his deceit. Chapter 10.4, The Anunnaki assess the damage to Mars and Earth. Rebuilding efforts commence. Chapter 10.5, Nibiru's atmosphere and resources are damaged. The Anunnaki seek new sources of gold on Earth, discovering gold nuggets. Survivors of Cain's lineage are found. Reconstruction and preparations are underway. Chapter 10.6, The need for landing sites for spaceships leads to the construction of the pyramids as makeshift mountains. Chapter 10.7, The Anunnaki continue seeking power and titles, dividing the lands among themselves. The Eleventh Tablet. Chapter 11.1, A period of peace is followed by conflict. A king's son murders his brother to secure inheritance. The widow seeks revenge by conceiving a son for vengeance. The son grows, raises an army, and avenges his father's murder. Chapter 11.2, Anunnaki descendants intermarry, causing strife and alliances. Love interests emerge between descendants of different king's sons, bringing both peace and potential unrest. Chapter 11.4, A bride seeks revenge for her groom's murder and attempts to steal powerful artifacts. Tower of Babel is constructed and subsequently destroyed. Language diversity and conflicts arise. Chapter 11.5, The once exiled son claims his own land, quarrels with his brother, and eventually departs for a new land across the ocean. He becomes known as Ra in Egyptian mythology and history is manipulated to erase his older brother's legacy. Chapter 11.6, The father provides Ra with knowledge and MEs. A third region is established, and the bride is given control. Language barriers lead to conflict and hinder development. The Twelfth Tablet. Chapter 12.1, The king arrives on earth, and rebuilding continues. Chapter 12.2, A feast is held upon the king's arrival. Mysterious symbols are mentioned, resembling the all-seeing eye on the pyramid, as well as discussions of a spaceship beacon and beam. Chapter 12.3, After the King's visit, reorganization occurs. Earthlings are integrated with Anunnaki in cities, and they're given a city of their own. The point system for kingship and authority is devised. The bride seeks revenge and tries to steal MEs. In Zakaria Sitchin's translations, MEs represent divine decrees embodying knowledge and powers essential for human civilization. Chapter 12.4, The bride's plot to steal MEs fails. The Tower of Babel is constructed and destroyed. Languages and alphabets are diversified, leading to the scattering of people and confusion. City kings rise and fall. Chapter 12.5 The exiled son gains control over his own land, but conflicts persist with his brother. Ra's rise and changes in Egypt's history are noted. Anunnaki counting system shifts from base 60 to base 10. Chapter 12.6 The father grants Ra knowledge but withholds the ability to revive the dead. A third region is established under the bride's rule. 
language barriers hinder communication and progress. The 13th Tablet. Chapter 13.1, The Bride's Region Suffers, and She Neglects It. Her region is taken away, and she seeks pleasure by luring and killing men. Gilgamesh, a king, seeks immortality but dies without achieving it. Chapter 13.2, Ra becomes preoccupied with attaining immortality. He prompts people to find gold, leading to conflict with his brother's land. Ra desires to rule the entire earth. The bride discovers a new land and teaches earthlings about constellations. Chapter 13.3, the tablet discusses the war between Ra and the bride, two arch enemies. The earth commander has a dream similar to his brother's previous dream. Chapter 13.4, war intensifies, and the son of the king's son who created earthlings gains an advantage. He calls for surrender, but the earth commander knows of weapons of mass destruction hidden by his brother. Chapter 13.5, the weapons of terror are unleashed, wiping out Ra's forces. An evil dark cloud emerges and kills indiscriminately. Chapter 13.6, continuation of the previous tablet. The 14th tablet. Chapter 14.1, Enki and Enlil survey the aftermath of the weapons of terror, discussing the devastation caused. The land Ra desired is now destroyed. The Earth Commander heads westward to complete the original mission, focusing on the gold field. These translations by Zakaria Sitchin present a complex and imaginative narrative involving the Anunnaki, ancient astronauts, Earth's history, and their interactions with humanity. Feel free to share your thoughts and interpretations in the comment section and explore our other videos for more insights into this fascinating subject matter.